Great, so it looks like we are coming up on the top of the hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna introduce myself and then I'm gonna let Dr. DePaul introduce himself. Thank you everybody for joining. My name is Miles Murphy. I am the Academic and Industry Relations Manager here with Aspen Dental Management. For all you that don't know, Aspen Dental Management is the support organization for the over 800 offices in the Aspen Dental Network. Today I will be the moderator so I will be um, looking at the questions and asking Dr. DePaul as they come in live. So if I am looking at another screen, that just means I am, you know, looking at the questions and, and um, trying to relay them to Dr. DePaul. So um, please, I wanna urge all the students to use the question in A box that we have below um, to answer any question that comes top of mind, this is literally what it is, is an AMA, so it isn't ask me anything. So any question that comes top of mind, any question that you have, um, any question that you want to ask Dr. DePaul, feel free, type it in the Q&A box, and then he would be happy to answer some of them. Um, in addition to some of the questions that some of you already submitted when you signed up, um, I've been receiving some of those as well. So I will try my best to get through all of those. I will be circling back. Um, and trying to bunch the questions um, in order of um, how they relate to each other. So um, I also want to say one last thing. We are offering free CE. All you have to do is go to aspendentalce.com slash welcome. You go in, sign up, and you're good to go. You'll be able to dive into some of those free CE courses from there. So without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor to Dr. DePaul and let him introduce himself. Hi, everyone. My name is Eric DePaul. I've been with Aspen Dental for seven years now. Um, I graduated from the University of Pittsburgh in 2008. I did a one-year residency at Temple University, did an AGD there. And then I spent a few years working different jobs. Um, my father was actually a dentist. I worked with him for a while. I worked in community health. I've worked several other private practices and eventually I, I found my way to Aspen and kind of found my home there. So I have a broad range of experiences. My wife's also a dentist. So um, I kind of enjoy this because I can kind of answer a variety of questions, I think. So well, I'm ready to get started whenever you are. <laughs> great, great. Thank you, Dr. DePaul, um, for that introduction. And that actually leads to our first question. Um, as you mentioned, you know, your, your doctor's, a, I mean, your, your father's a dentist and um, so why, why Aspen Dental? Why did you choose Aspen Dental? Why did you say yes to Aspen? Um, honestly, my first few years of my career, I was, I was jumping around to different jobs and it was, it was hard to find stability, find the consistent paycheck, find consistent experience. I mean, you get out of school, we have these loans, we know how that is. We don't have a lot of experience. And I, I didn't know where to go and I knew some people working for Aspen and they were pretty settled and they were getting good experience. They were making decent money there. And so I was curious and I, I, you know, I applied for a job and I ended up with one of the larger owners within Aspen Dental, Dr. Gupta, and uh, we formed a nice partnership and things really just went, went from there. So. Great. Yeah. I've, I've heard great things about Dr. Gupta. So um, you're, you're, you're in really, you're, you're in really good hands. Um, that, that, that actually um, kind of relates to our next question. So while you were in dental school, um, what, were, what, what were some of the things that you heard about DSOs? And um, when you actually started working for a DSO, um, what were some of those maybe myths or some of those um, kind of things that you were hearing? What, what was different from your actual experience? I mean, Aspen was, sort of getting started back, you know, in the day, I think there were probably 40, 50 offices when I was in dental school, but they were in the Pittsburgh market and all the dental school instructors said it was a horrible thing, to be honest. <laughs> and even to this day, I go on dental town and I read about, you know, how the treatment plans, you know, it's overly treatment planned and, and all these other misconceptions and none of that happens. I mean, if you, if you come into one of our offices and you see the amount of need that our patients come in with, it's it's not none of those things actually happen. It's it's actually pretty conservative, all things considered, because these people need extensive work, generally speaking. But we don't we don't treatment plan them for scaling and root planing if they don't have bone loss and calculus buildup and 
all the other factors that you know go into that. They don't get a crown unless the tooth requires a crown. So there's there's all these misconceptions about you know what you're actually doing in the office and that you're seeing a million patients a day. And it's not like that at all, especially when you start out as an associate. I mean, our, our goal is to make you comfortable there and give you a home. So um, we do everything in our power to do that and make you comfortable. And you know, I, I base it off of my associate what what kind of experience you're going to have in there. If you want to be really involved with the treatment planning, then that's what I'm going to let you do. If you just want to focus on the um, actual procedures for a while, then you do that. So, and I think most of us who've been with the company for a while understand that. And, you know, we try to tailor things to the newer doctors that come in. So, um, but there, there's so many misconceptions about you're going to be forced to treatment plan this or do that or do whatever. And none of it's true. You're, you're making the choices as to what these treatment plans are, how you're treating these patients. It's entirely up to you. Aspen has no say in that. They help with the management, the business management, but not, not the actual treatment of the patients. Great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you for providing your insight with that one. Um, so I, I know that you mentioned some of the newer, the newer associates. Um, so going back to when you were in dental school, what were, when you were say a D4, what were some of the motivational factors for you that led you to make your, make to your decision with Aspen? Like what were some of, the, some of the things that you were looking for once you started your professional career? Was it mentorship? Was it um, you know, anything regarding finances? Um, was it location? Like what, what really stuck out to you as something that was mandatory for you once you started? Well, that, I mean, that's actually a mistake I made when I first went out because I didn't, I wanted mentorship and I wanted some financial stability. And because of all the misconceptions I had about Aspen, because of everything that was out there, I, I kind of veered away from them for several years where if I had started with them earlier, I would have been much further along in my career a few years into it. So um, you, you will get those things with Aspen. You're, you're going to get a set pay. And generally speaking, you're going to get some profit sharing on top of that. Um, you're going to get a wide variety of procedures and you're going to develop it at your own pace. Because again, I mean, the, the idea is Aspen does value, value you very highly as a dentist. Um, they, they want to keep you around for as long as possible. So the idea is that to bring you in there and have you produce this insane amount. The idea is to bring you in there and get you comfortable and get you, you know, feeling better about the procedures, treatment planning, whatever it may be. Um, the idea is to give you a home, not to just force you to produce, produce, produce. And I think that's you know, a big misconception. And you'll have financial stability at the same time. You're not gonna get that in a lot of private practice associateships. You, you will get that with Aspen. Great, great, great. So to kind of piggyback on um, your answer, this is a question that just came in regarding the treatment planning. So um, they asked, why do my own treatment planning as a new grad, do I get full autonomy over your treatment plans? Um, so when you came out and you started, what was your, what was your experience regarding treatment planning, whether it was, you know, with your owner, you know, or were you, were you able to create your own treatment plan and, and help the patients, you know, to your best ability? From day one with Aspen, I've been able to make my own treatment plans. Yes. Um, again, as a, as an associate, you know, a new doctor coming out, it, I, I leave it up to you what you want to do. Um, that's going to differ, you know, depending on the doctor you start with, but nobody's asking you to do anything you're not comfortable with. And, and, you know, some of the new docs come out and they don't necessarily want to get right into the treatment planning. Um, my current associate, she started a year ago. She was right out of dental school. She was very comfortable with treatment planning. She would ask me questions. That means she still does on a daily basis, but I mean, she wanted to be in their treatment planning. So she's been doing her own treatment plans from day one. So, you know, generally speaking, you're going to be doing your own treatment plans. Now it's going to depend. I mean, there, some of the docs with Aspen have been working for 30 some years and they see, you know, a young doc coming in, in their twenties and you know, you're, you're a baby to them. And so they may take a little more control, but nobody, I, I know for a fact, nobody's going to make you do anything you don't want to do. So. Right. Right. Great. Great. Um, so regarding coming in as, as a, an associate and, you know, you as, as an MCD, how do the, well, I got a question. What, what's the difference between the associate and MCD schedule? Um, what, what can a new grad, what, what, you know, a new grad that comes out of, that comes out of um, dental school, 
um, what would their schedule kind of look like opposed to, you know, a, a managing clinical director? Well, as a new grad, I mean, we're going to ask you how long you want for different procedures, how long you need for a filling or two fillings, how long you need for a buildup and crown prep or a root canal. So that's going to give the office manager some guidelines and, you know, the office as a whole, some guidelines as to how long to schedule these procedures for you. As a, as a new grad starting again, the only expectation is that you manage your own schedule of procedures. Um, the new patients, the overflow column, you know, with emergencies and denture patients are really the responsibility of the managing clinical director. With that said, again, the, most of the dentists I work with want to get in there and start seeing these other things, learn more about dentures, they want to start doing treatment plans. Um, that, that's not everybody though, it's on an individual basis. So you, you come in, all you're really expected to do is work your, your own column as a new associate. What you want to do beyond that is up to you and how long you get for those procedures again is up to you. We want you to be comfortable. We want you to develop your skill set, and you know, we, we want you to stay with Aspen is the idea. So. Great. Great. Thank you, doctor. Um, so what just to go back upon that um as a new dentist what did you find frustrating coming out of dental school um was there any if, if there's any challenges that came top of mind um what would you say were you know some of the biggest challenges that you faced as a new grad um and then you know transitioning to your professional career i mean uh, <laughs> there's so many challenges coming out <laughs> for me i mean financially it was certainly a challenge because i wasn't making a lot of money initially so um, you know, you're trying to pay your bills and, and you're struggling with that. Um, and then clinically, I mean, it depends how comfortable you are coming out. I, I did a one-year residency and I, I still had hesitations, you know, I still lack confidence. And when you're dealing with that and you're in certain office environments that aren't supportive, I mean, you, you will, you can get frustrated with a lot of different things. You get frustrated clinically, you get fr frustrated economically. So, I mean, finding that home is, is, is important. Um, so that's, again, that's kind of why I like to, to get on here and, and do this type of thing because there's so many misconceptions about Aspen and I'm like, no, listen guys, this isn't that hard. There's a good home here for you, so. Right, right, thank you. I, I knew you'd be the perfect one for this. That's why I reached out to you. Um, there's actually a question that just came in regarding residency. So why did you choose residency? Why didn't you, graduate dental school and go right to work. What was the deciding factor on why you wanted to do an extra year and why you wanted to hone your skills a little bit more? I mean, for me, I, I just wasn't super confident coming out of dental school, to be honest. Um, I, I felt like I needed more experience before I went out in the, to practice. You know, that's not the case for everybody. Like I said, my, my current associate came right out of dental school, was super confident, super at ease right away. Um, really good clinically. So I, it's, it's an individual basis. I mean, if, if you feel like you can do it, you'll, you'll certainly make better money going right into private or Aspen or private practice or whatever it may be. Um, not necessarily private practice because I didn't, but <laughs> um, so it, it's, it's up to you. I mean, if you feel like you need a residency, that's good. You can go into Aspen though and kind of treat that as a residency and, and make decent money too. So you know, with loans being what they are, that may not be a bad idea. Uh, for me at the time, again, misconceptions about Aspen and just, just didn't have confidence. So I, I did the AGD and it actually it helped me a lot. And I, but I still struggled after that just because I made poor decisions as far as jobs. So. Great. Great. Thank you. Um, so we, we have a question. I really want to do implants. Does Aspen do implants? Um, what would be your your answer to that. Do we do implants or are we able to do implants if we're interested? Um, how would you answer that? Yes, uh, that's Aspen is where I learned to place implants and I place my own implants now. Um, I was one of the first groups where we did the live training. We went down to uh, Mexico with the California Implant Institute. I think they're running it through a different continuing ed program now. Um, there is some online courses just to get you started learning more about implants, but they are doing live training for Aspen doctors right now. So it's, you, there's going to be cone beams in every Aspen office eventually. I mean, all the new ones are getting them. So, um, but the old ones are also going back and getting cone beams. So implants is something they're, they're starting to emphasize more and more. 
we do have a lot of denture patients, so it's a it's a huge help with them as far as over dentures, but also, you know, just single tooth or that type of re restoration as well. But I, I started placing implants when I was with Aspen, so yes, implants is a definite possibility and something they would like you to do actually. Great, great, thank you. Um, so this is a question regarding your career. So if I start off as an associate, how quickly can I become imagine, a managing clinical director, lead dentist at Aspen Dental? Um, so, some people make that transition very quickly. I mean, within a matter of months, you know, some of it's a matter of, are you willing to move and go to an office that needs it? Um, Part of it's just how comfortable are you? If if you get comfortable quickly with the treatment planning and you're helping out, you know, the whole office and, you know, you, you can make that transition quickly. It's just a question of where are you willing to go to do it and how, how quickly do you want to do it? So, I mean, some people only spend a few months as an associate and they're already becoming an MCD. Other people have been associates for over 10 years. I know some of them, and that's because that's what they're comfortable with. Um, they found the spot, they found an office they like, and they just continue to be the associates. So that, that doesn't have to be the case. Great, great. Um, so we're gonna go with, there's another question that came in. I, I think this is really, really important regarding the times we are in now. Um, so what changes are you making when you see patients now due to COVID opposed to when you were seeing them before? Well, we screen every patient before they come in now, obviously. I mean, we're taking temperatures, we're asking them questions, you know, to make sure they don't, they aren't symptomatic for COVID before they come in. Um, the PPE Aspen has been great with, uh, I you probably were able to get it more easily than you would in a private practice, just because we have 800 offices, we have that purchasing power. So um, N95 mask are a normal anymore and the face shields and the gowns and everything else. Um, you know, in dentistry, though, we've always had those concerns, whether, you know, HIV or hepatitis C, obviously, COVID's a little bit different than those, but we're always pretty good at taking those precautions and preventing this. Um, we're taking more precautions now, and I haven't heard of any transmission in any of the offices, so that, that's a good thing. I mean, there's still patients that need care, I, I, and I think that's the right thing to do is that we keep offering it. Great, great. Um... This is, this is more of a, a question that goes case by case basis. You know, I, I think I'm, I'm actually interested in this one as well. So what are you currently enjoying about dentistry? You know, at this point in your career, um, you know, you, you have a couple of years in. So what, what would you say is your favorite thing about dentistry and what you currently wake up in the morning and you love to do and you enjoy? Well, I mean, just the clinical part, I, I really, I, I always kind of like getting in there and doing surgery. I, I like, <laughs> I like the bloody stuff, but um uh, as far as what I enjoy, I enjoy going in and seeing the, my team every day and, you know, seeing those great patients every day and, and working with my associate. I mean, it's, it's the people more than anything. I'm clinical part. It's just, yeah, I, I like the surgery, but the people is what you end up enjoying when you stop worrying so much about the clinical stuff. Great, great, great. Um, thank you. So geographically speaking, um, did you wind up working somewhere that you wanted or did you have to move? How, do, how does that look like regarding location for you when you started your career? Um, I'm not, I grew up in the Philadelphia region. Um, now I'm about an hour uh, northwest of that, the Allentown region. I have a little bit of a drive to my office. So I, I'm pretty close to where I grew up. That, that worked out. Um, depending on your flexibility, that can help you grow a little faster um, because Aspen is always opening up new offices. Um, you want to get into the ownership program, the new markets, you know, frequently or the place that you're going to end up going to. Um, so it, yeah, it, it's, it's dependent on, on what you want. Um, the urban, you know, more of the cities they're, they're starting to go into more and more We're we're getting, trying to diversify our market a bit too. So it, it's getting interesting. I mean, we're doing more and more with clear aligners, the implants that we already talked about and, so it's going to be an interesting company, you know, going forward. I mean, it's grown so much already, but 10 years from now, it's going to be really interesting to see what we have. So. Yeah, we, we were actually having that conversation before we went live. It's just Aspen is where when, when you hear Aspen Dental, you think, you know, how innovative we are as an organization. And, you know, here Dr. DePaul is, is giving his firsthand account on, you know, how things keep growing and things like that. So it's, it's great to hear that from you. Um, 
Another question I have for you is, does Aspen believe in work-life balance? How are you able to juggle a full schedule and your life outside of work? I mean, that's actually one of the great things about Aspen is because you don't have to worry about your advertising, where your new patients are coming from. Um, you have to worry about you know, all your billing and insurances, um, your, your staffing. Now, I, I always interview any people I'm bringing on my team, but you don't have to put the ads out for your you know, staff members or anything like that. So it's a lot easier achieving work-life balance with the, with the DSO. I mean, well, with that, I know with Aspen, I haven't worked for any other DSOs, but that, that's one of the best parts about Aspen really is that that's much more easily achieved with them. So. Great, great, great. Um, we, we keep getting some questions coming in here. So one question that I want to ask you is um, I know this goes back to one of your, you know, one of the things that you said, you know, you graduated and you were hearing so much about, and then once you started actually working for Aspen, it was a little bit different. So um, this, this is something that I hear from a lot of students as well um, regarding production goals. Is there, is there any production goals? Like when, when you step into the office every day, do you have a production goal? Um, that, that's, that's one of the, the um, kind of myths that I, I hear from, from a lot of students and one of the concerns that I hear as well. So, you know, he, now's their chance to kind of hear it from an, an actual doc that, that, that works with us. So are there any production goals, doc? No, there, there's not production goals. I, I mean, as an overall office, I mean, sure, there's budgets we have to meet. Um, there, there's, it's, not a, it's not a production goal, though. I mean, you, you want the office to be profitable. You want it to keep going on. You're going to have that in any dental practice that you go to. So, But as far as, you know, I have to go in here and produce $5,000, $8,000, $10,000. dollars so there's never a production goal, ever. And as an associate, as a, you know, somebody just coming in, it's, it's not about – production at all really it's about getting you comfortable with dentistry <laughs> so um but yeah as if you move into an mcd role you're going to have to start paying more attention to how the office is performing monthly it's still not a daily production goal it's just all right is is the office making money this month this is this is a business and that's part of any dental practice not just aspen but as far as yeah i have to hit this ten thousand dollar mark today no that doesn't exist okay great 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 um, so regarding some of the benefits, what are some of the benefits that are available to, to Aspen? Um, what, some, what are some of the benefits that you've had um, throughout your Aspen dental career and, and are available to doctors that join with us? Well, I mean, I think we have pretty much every benefit out there available to us, right? <laughs> so, I mean, we yeah. get insurance, disability, um, you know, you get dental coverage for the family. And, um, have a 401k. We, we have all those types of benefits. I, I'm assuming that's what they're asking for. We get discounts with a lot of different companies too, actually. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything you could want, they pretty much offer benefit wise. So. Okay. Great. Great. Um, so when you first started, what were, were there any resources or um, training programs that Aspen Dental provided you that you found that were helpful um, right after dental school, I know that I mentioned at the beginning of the, the webinar was we do offer Aspen Dental CE. Um, was there anything that this, this kind of ties back to some mentorship opportunities? Was there any mentorship or any trainings that you, you went through that you found were, were helpful, whether it was like shadowing or, or visiting an office or something like that? Yeah, I mean, I, when I started with Dr. Gupta, I hadn't placed any implants and um, he had placed tons of mini implants back then. So um, I, I started with that with him when, you know, when I started placing mini implants. So um, I, I really don't place that many anymore. It's, it's, you know, mostly standard implants anymore, but I did. But Aspen has a, a ton of CE they're offering and that just keeps getting better and better with it. The implant CE they're offering now. Um, and the, the, well, it wasn't Invisalign, still is Invisalign, but we're diversifying a bit with the clear aligners. So there's ortho C now, and there's, there's a whole range of other C as well, as far as endo and everything else. But, and then the, with the mentorship, I mean, again, you get in there with a the doc that's a little more experienced. Um, and it's, it's going to depend on what you want. I mean, I've had associates that want me to actually go in the room with them sometimes and help them out with extractions. I have other associates who don't want me to do that at all. Um, so it's, it's more just having conversations with them. And, you know, my current associates more, all right, well, let's go over a treatment plan. She doesn't always agree with me, but I mean, she always asks me questions. So it's, it's, 
it depends on what you want. But the CEs, it was good when I started, and it's gotten much better actually over the years. So, great, great, great. Um, a part of your your answer transitions to one of the next questions that we received was, um, what procedures do you like to do? What are some of the procedures um, that you know? at this point in your career you enjoy doing do you do you do all procedures are there some that you don't do um what, what are some of the procedures that you like to do um again i like surgery i, I enjoy taking removing teeth placing implants that's probably my favorite stuff um after that you know more crown and bridge stuff i enjoy um i don't i don't love doing fillings um don't love endo really i do everything now it's just you know if, if I didn't have to place another filling the rest of my life, that would probably be fine with me. So. <laughs> great, great, great. Um, another question that we received was regarding your schedule. Um, how many patients do you believe that you see on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I mean, procedure wise, it depends, you know, what type of procedures I'm doing that day. I mean, if it's, a day of you know single tooth extractions and fillings i i probably have a patient every hour i don't i don't schedule super tight and if it, they're larger procedures i mean i may have three in the morning three in the afternoon or e even less than that sometimes um new patients a day our office averages in seven to eight new patients a day so um that takes up some time there you want to spend some time with the new patients and then uh, again, we have, we have a column for emergencies and, and dentures, and, and that, that'll vary by the day, too. Um, with, with my associate there, we, we'll tend to put more procedures in. If you're in that office by yourself, there's only so many people you can see. So, I mean, are there days where I see over 20 patients? Probably, but some of them are a denture adjustment that takes 30 seconds. So, you, you balance the day you want, you, how you want to. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't have it any other way. Nobody's going to tell me how to run my day. I mean, you can have a very productive day without slamming your schedule. I mean, you have to spend some time with your patients. Ultimately, it's going to affect your office if you, if you don't. It's going to affect the reputation of the office. So you have to schedule the day in a way that's manageable. And that, those are, you know, that's part of it. Patient satisfaction is such a big part of Aspen. I mean, that's a part of everyday life in there um, if, if you have dissatisfied patients um, they, they check out with these patients after they leave so you're, you're going to get a notice if you had somebody left and weren't, they weren't happy with their visit so it's not again you, you have all these misconceptions about production 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 well actually we're checking about the satisfaction when the patient leaves and you're going to hear about that first so um, yeah it varies it varies uh, am I Moving usually, yeah, I'm, I'm moving, but it's not, it's not like I'm exhausted at the end of the day. It's, it's definitely something you can do. Great, great. Um, so regarding your relationship with um, the others in, in the office, so how, does your, how is your relationship with the, the fellow hygienists in the office and the office manager and dental assistants, et cetera, um, what would you say sums up your relationship with them? Is it collaborative or um, how, how, how did you go about that? Yeah, I've, I've worked with most of them for a few years now, but even, you know, before that, when I got started with Aspen, it's, it's always been, I had a, it's always been a good relationship as long as they wanted it to be. I mean, you, when you first get started, you, you may find that there are certain people that you, you don't like necessarily, or you don't get along with them, but you, you're, you're also the dentist. You're the one that, you are the most important one in the office at the end of the day. You all want to work together as a team, but it's going to be kind of your call where how things go with, with your office staff. Um, and you, you want to make that a collaborative relationship. You don't want to be at odds with them. But again, if you have somebody that's just not willing to do that with you, then um, the, the dentist gets valued highly at Aspen. So, you know, you have to keep that in mind. Great. Great. Um, so this is a this is an ownership question. Have you ever thought about owning an office within the Aspen Dental Network? Well, I'm part owner at my current office with Dr. Gupta. I mean, that's that's one way to go to go about it. Um, you're in an office that's already established. You, you 
you know what to expect there. You get comfortable there. It's kind of what happened with me. And Dr. Gupta, he owns a lot of offices. So there's, there's those kinds of opportunities to partner with, you know, one of the larger owners in the company. Um, there's also the opportunity to own on your own. And that's where if you're, you're a little more flexible with your markets, um, a lot of people are trying to buy these offices so if if you have some flexibility you're willing to move it's so it's something that aspen will you know and embrace and encourage and work with you with so it and people may do very well with it so it's, it's something to consider for sure great great um so regarding your relationship with your your specialty so your your oral surgeons and your endos if you can kind of give an overview of how that works when it comes to you know, the treatment planning and when you refer out cases um, that you think would be best suitable for them. Um, what does that look like for you? Well, it's, it's good. Right? <laughs> Anything <laughs> I don't want to do, I send to them. I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, the dual surgeons offering IV sedation at office. So, I mean, patients love that. He gets so many patients from that. Um, you know, I, you work with them. You, you talk with them about what they want. You, you want to try to keep them happy. I, it's always been a collaborative relationship with them as well. It's just, okay, here, here's what I got. What do you want? What can we do to make your schedule good? And it's, it's really nice to have them there. It's, it's fantastic, really. And patients love it, too, because they don't have to go to a different office. When they find out that the specialist is right there, I mean, they, they love it. Okay, great, great. Um, thank you for that, doctor. One other question I have for you is, um, so regarding the type of patients that you see on a day-to-day -day basis, um, is there a way that you can maybe, um, you know, describe like what type of patient, what is the average Aspen patient um, that, that you come across and you think is, is a trend and that you see um, every day when, when you're in the chair? And you're I mean, the, the average Aspen patients, you know, I mean, it's usually a around middle age and they haven't seen the dentist in, in years and they have a lot of dental issues and they just, you know, they haven't been able to find a dental home for finances, uh, uh, for fear. And there's so many other reasons. And, and Aspen is very good at getting those patients to come into the office. So um, we see, see a number of elderly patients too, due because of dentures. Um, there has been more diversity over the past few years with, with the clear liners coming along and, and some emphasis on the implants as well. We're starting to see more younger patients now. So it, it, it's changing a little bit, I'd say. I, I mean, I've certainly done a number of Invisalign cases over the past year. And when I, when I started seven years ago, Invisalign certainly wasn't part of the conversation. So it's, it's diversifying more and more, but I mean, the typical Aspen patient has typically been that one that hasn't seen the dentist for a while, has an overwhelming amount of dental need, but it's, it's interesting how it's, it's developing too. Great, great. Um, so this is a question that just came in. So it says that I, I heard that Aspen um, doesn't, doesn't work with contracts, so we, we don't do contracts. Um, what would be the difference between what you signed, which was a letter of an agreement and maybe like a contract somewhere else, which is, you know, you have to, you have to be specifically um, working in that office for, you know, a certain amount of years, or there's a, there's a time frame that you have to work there. So what was your take on not having to sign a contract when you started working with Aspen? Yeah, I, I mean, you do sign, like you said, a letter of agreement. I mean, you're not, you're not obligated with anything. You, 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 it says, you know, what your set pay is going to be. So I, I think that's good and talks about, you know, your percentage of profit sharing that you would get. And um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess there's some pretty bad contracts out there. You should have, you know, a lawyer review anything you sign before you sign it. But I, I think you'll find compared to a lot of the other ones, because I, I did work in, again, in a number of places. Um, Aspen's contract is pretty straightforward, pretty, pretty good. It's well, not a contract or however you want to term it. You're still, there's still <laughs> something there and it's telling you what you're going to get. It's, it's, the, it's very straightforward, really. I mean, some of the other ones get a little convoluted. So. Great, great. Um, so this is a, no, this is a question regarding compensation. So without going into any numbers or any specifics, if you can just um, kind of lay out the compensation structure um, like I said, you don't have to go into any numbers, um, just like how does it work and how does it, a doctor typically get paid? Well, depending on the owner you're with, you're going to get a, a daily guarantee. 
Um, and then after that, you, you get compensated based off of the profitability of the office for that month, a uh, percentage of that. So it's not just your production. I mean, it encourages the teamwork because it depends, you know, what, what the other doctor produces, what the hygienist produces, what your specialist produces. And, that, and that's where you get working together. And that's, uh, that's part of the reason I think why Aspen does as well as it does, because there's that idea we, we're all working together in this. And that's, that's how we're going to be successful. It's the way you're going to be financially successful. And um, yeah, you, you don't want to get into numbers, but if you start looking at what you get with Aspen versus other places, I mean, I, I know what my friends make in private practice and I know what I make. And, and again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a part owner in MCD and I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. So um, there's opportunities to make quite a bit more than I make even within Aspen. So, um, but as an associate too, I mean, you, if I started out with that guarantee that the Aspen doctors get, I, I would have been thrilled with it, you know, however many years ago it was now, but. <laughs> great, great. Um, so when you did graduate regarding um, the licensure, how, how did that process work? So once you graduated and you received your degree, um, what was the time frame from when you started, from when you got licensed to when you actually started working? Um, well, I, I, I did that residency for a year, so I wasn't, I wasn't worried about it initially. I'm trying to think. I got since 2009. I, I probably started working pretty quickly. Uh, may, maybe it was like a month after the residency ended. I started out and again, it was it wasn't that I was waiting for my license I, for too long. And then I wasn't sure exactly what I was doing. I, I wanted to start with my dad, but he didn't really have the patience. So I was I was hopping around different jobs, but it was it was kind of a mess. I mean, really, <laughs> but I wasn't waiting for a license all that long, actually. So it seems at least um, the students I see coming coming out or, you know, getting started a month or two after graduation, it seems. Okay, great, great. Um, so regarding insurance, what does the typical, um, you can speak to your office as well. So what, what, what does your office take regarding specific insurances? And um, I, I wanna say like, to my knowledge, I'm sure that we take um, pretty much everything, but if you, you're a better testament than I am because you're in the office every day. So what, what do you, what do, what insurance does your office take for the most part? Yeah, we take, we take a, a wide variety of the PPOs. Um, a couple of the, the HMOs that I think we're involved with. We don't, we actually don't get a ton of patients from the HMOs in my office. Um, there's no government funded programs that we participate with. So, um, a lot, we get a lot of cash patients, really. You're going to find that throughout Aspen because of the, the payment plans that we offer. So, I mean, people don't realize that there's, there's an awful lot of cash patients actually coming in. So, um, yeah, the insurance, and the insurance isn't much of a concern because Aspen has figured out how to work with these different insurance companies so that, you know, you're, you're not getting reimbursed $3 when you go in the, to do a crown or a filling or something, you're, you're actually getting a pretty good reimbursement rate. Great, great. Um, so this question actually came in. So they said that, you know, you, you have some friends that work for some private practices. Um, what are, what are some of the, the things that you're hearing over there compared to what your, what your, um, your experiences at, at a DSO? Um, I know that you, you touched upon the compensation, um, is there any other things that, that they're, that they're telling you that, um, you know, you, you, you rather, you rather DSO over a private practice? What are, what are some of those things that you're hearing? Yeah. I mean, it really depends. I mean, there, there's some of them that are doing well. There's some that are struggling. Um, you're, you're, you're taking on a lot more debt generally when you go into a private practice. Um, you know, new patients are generally more of a struggle in a private practice. And, you know, some of these guys are, are pretty business savvy and, and they've developed their own marketing campaigns. But, uh, you know, dentists in general, are, I mean, we're not going to be as good with the advertising. We're not going to be as good figuring out, you know, the business side of this. So the, the DSO takes that part of it away. And again, that's the work-life balance there. Um, you know, if you have to be in complete control of everything, and which I, I thought I was, and then I, I gradually found out that I'm actually like having some help with this stuff. Um, 
you know, the, the DSO will work for you. It will work well, really. Um, and, you know, financially it can work out really well also. Um, so, you know, yeah, you have to be open-minded with it. If, if you're determined to do it on your own and you think you know how to do all this, um, you know, then go for it. I mean, maybe the DSO doesn't work for you, but again, somebody has traditionally been pretty thick headed and stubborn like me is actually, okay, wait a minute, this actually does work, so. Hey, great, um, thank you for that. So uh, one question that we that we received was, um, how many new patients does Aspen or your office specifically see could be a daily basis, weekly basis, um, because they mentioned that that they, they know that Aspen gets a lot of patients. So <laughs> is it mostly new patients? Is it mostly return patients? What would you say? Um, how does that look? Again, it depends on the office. So my office does about seven or eight new patients a day. Um, we have enough patients for two full-time hygienists as far as, you know, recall and, and processing the new patients too. Um, some patients, you know, may, or some offices rather may get four to five new patients a day and maybe be only need one hygienist and the real busy offices. I mean, there's some that have 10 new patients a day and they have three hygienists and three doctors going. And so it depends. It depends on the Aspen office that you're at. I mean, there is going to be some variations between the, the different offices, the different markets. Um, there, there's enough patients generally for, for mostly all the Aspen offices. It's just, just how busy are they? Okay, great, great. Um, so another question that we received was regarding the, we, we touched upon the, the scheduling difference between the associate and the MCD. Um, so what would be the difference between a one column schedule and maybe a three column schedule that MCD works? Um, what, what's the difference in the chairs? Well, the, the three column schedule, you're going to have the one column for procedures and uh, the second column is going to be new patients. And third column is again, it's going to be overflow. It's going to be an emergency. It's going to be venture adjustment or um, venture impressions. Um, so the, the one column schedule, you're just focusing on your procedures for the day. Um, and again, generally speaking, as an associate becomes more comfortable, they're going to help out and the, the new patients, so they're going to help out with the overflow column. So you end up, you know, you end up having help for the, the three chairs that you're working. But I worked three chairs on my own for a while, too. I mean, it, it is doable. You learn how to juggle it. I, it Coming out of dental school, I, I think, you know, I would have been very intimidated by that, um, but not everybody would be. Uh, but once you're, once you're out there for a few years, it's like, all right, well, I need this long, this long, this long. And, and keeps you busy if you're doing it all by yourself, but it's, it's manageable though too, so. Okay, great, great. Um, so this goes back to another COVID question in regarding to the patients. Mm -hmm. Or what's the what's the distancing aspect of the patients waiting in the in the office? Or are you are you treating? Is how how many patients are able to um, sit in the office at each time? Is are they are they just you know supposed to schedule supposed to come for their appointment or are they able to sit there? How does that look like if it's if it's a busy schedule? Right. Um, well, we have we have seven chairs in the office, so I mean. As far as them being in the waiting room, we, we only allow the patient to come in. We used to allow them to come in with their family, obviously. Um, but now we have the chairs in the waiting room separated, so there's at least six feet between all of them. And we try to we try to keep the schedule so that, you know, they're they're either back in one of the operatories or if they're out in the waiting room, they're, they're the waiting room isn't getting that crowded. I mean, we're not nobody's on top of one another anymore. It, it used to be before COVID, we, we'd let them come in with their spouse or the kid, you know, whoever, and the waiting room would get pretty crowded. But yeah, we've, we've had to alter that, alter the scheduling a bit and certainly alter the setup. Um, so, you know, social distancing in the office, even with it still being fairly busy, it's, it, you can make it work. Great, great. Um, so I, actually just received this question regarding support in your office. Um, have you ever, what, what does the support look like? I, I know, are, are, you, are you the only dentist in the office? Um, or is there another dentist in there with you? 
Were you able to um, kind of refer something to them directly? How does that support look? I, I know that's a question that a lot of the students have because um, they want to make sure that they're fully supported once they come out of dental school and um, they have someone else there with them. So what does your support look like? Right. I mean, absolutely. When you first come out of dental school, um, they're go going to be asked what you're comfortable with. You know, first off, you're going to be asked how long you need for a procedure. If it's something you're not comfortable with and you want to refer to the, you know, the senior doctor in your office to do, they can do it. Or you also, for the most part, there's an endodontist or neural surgeon in most Aspen dental offices. So you have, you have that as well. Um, so when you, you're coming out, you, do, you just have to be vocal and be honest about, you know, what you need and what you want. I mean, there's, you know, a lot of new grads come in and there's some people that aren't super comfortable initially. I mean, I know, I know of some people that have been with Aspen as long as I have or even longer and they, they came right out of school and, you know, they were taking three hours to do a crown prep and, and they've stayed with Aspen all these years and they're, they're such good dentists at this point and they're doing so well. But I mean, you hear the stories about them when they started and it's like, uh, you know, it's, they never, people didn't think they were going to turn out as good as they did. But the, I mean, you can't, you can't worry about that. You have to get comfortable when you come out of school. You have to be vocal about it. Um, again, Aspen wants you to stick around. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, let, let Aspen know what you need, what you want. Okay, great, great. Um, thank you for that, doctor. Another question I have is regarding the culture. So what does the Aspen culture look like? What are some of the things that um, kind of sold you on the Aspen culture? Um, yeah, that's the thing I was, that's what I was really worried about going into it. What, what, what is Aspen culture? You hear all these things and then, then you start working there and you you realize that, all right, I'm making all the clinical decisions. And that was something I was really nervous about going into it. And then you realize all these people are coming in and, you know, why, why are so many people coming in here? And you realize how many people Aspen has helped over the years and how many people have found comfort in our offices versus these other offices that they've been to. And, and the culture is really just that. It's, it's saying yes to these patients that have been struggling for a while and, you know, trying to go on above and beyond for them. And that, that's, it's been emphasized so much since I've been there. So we're going, well, this is a yes, yes culture. We want to make these patients happy. The patient satisfaction is, I mean, gosh, it's, it's such a big part of Aspen, right, Miles? I mean, it's, it's huge. Uh, they emphasize it all the time. And so you, the misconceptions out there compared to the reality of it, it's, it's just interesting. I mean, it's, it's what can we do to help these patients and make them happy? Absolutely. I, just to kind of touch upon what you say, yeah, Aspen Dental is super, super big on patient satisfaction. Um, they want to provide patients with um, premium care and they want the patients to come back and be comfortable with all of our docs. So I, I think like you, like you mentioned, that's something that's really, really important to us. And um, that, that just goes to show, you know, some of those myths that were, that were debunked, you know, once you started working with us and um, it, it's a great thing to kind of, you know, be a part of that culture. So um, thank you for that. So another COVID question, what are, are you seeing any type of different, different cases now that you were in before, or is it pretty much the same? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. I can and still going in doing dentistry. People are having same needs. I mean, there's, you can get questions about it now for sure. I mean, you know, how, you know, what's going on with COVID? What are you guys doing differently? And you, you go through it with the patients, you reassure them. Um, not we haven't seen much of a drop off really i was a little concerned initially but i mean pe people need dental work done i mean i don't we have to take care of their you know their oral health as well i mean it's this is it i mean we're we're part of medicine which we can't ignore it so right yeah absolutely um i completely agree with that so another question that just came in was this is this is more of a personal question like do you find anything about dentistry frustrating at this point in your career is, is there anything that um you know maybe i don't want to say keeps you up at night but something that you know like you, you still have a, a hard time overcoming well i mean you <laughs> you're always going to have those days <laughs> you know whether it's 
you know, you got a crown back that just didn't fit right or, you know, you, you, you did an end though and you didn't love it at the end of the day or, or you had a patient that you was just unreasonable and you couldn't make happy. I mean, you, you're going to, you're going to have those days. I don't, I don't care how long you're doing it for. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me as much as it did early in my career. I mean, yeah, I, I did lose sleep over at one point and now I've, I think I've learned to put it in perspective after doing it for a little while, but you're, no matter what, you're always going to have those days here and there. So, Great, great. Um, one question I received was, what do you, if you can pinpoint one thing, what do you like the most working about Aspen Dental, working for Aspen Dental? Um, yeah, I, I, I th that's a tough one. I mean, there's a lot I like. I mean, I, I like I said, the people I work with and, and I know a lot of people, a lot of different offices too. I mean, again, I'm part of one of the larger groups within Aspen. So there, there's 20 some offices that I've got to meet, you know, different people at and the leadership retreats that they have, you get to meet a lot of the other people in the company through that. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's the people again, that's, that's what I find most enjoyable. I mean, the people I work with daily, the patients I see daily, um, it, it's, it's a lot of positivity. I mean, there's, there's, like I said, there's those days where things are frustrating, but it, if you focus on the people and you focus on those patients that are really happy and you focus on, you know, your team members and it's, there's a lot, there's a lot of positivity to focus on there. There really is. I mean, there's a lot of patients who, gosh, I mean, they, they come in with, you know, really in a bad situation from a dental perspective. And I mean, they, they leave and all of a sudden they can smile again. And it's, it's true. It happens a lot in Aspen. And it's, it, if you focus on all those positive things, I mean, you know, it's hard not to be happy if you can just focus on that. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's great. Um, absolutely. I completely agree with you on that one. Um, and just to kind of touch upon what you said, I, I've seen, a lot of success videos on um, patients, you know, they, they weren't, they were so, so embarrassed with their smile or they, you know, they, they were never able to smile in photos or they, you know, they were never able to, you know, go have event, go to events and, you know, show off their teeth. And, you know, there's been a lot of success stories where um, I think there was one where, you know, he, he, he just wanted to, to have a smile for his wedding and, and Aspen, one of the Aspen doctors had provided that for him um kind of almost made me cry <laughs> um but but yeah that 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 that's another that that's another success story that I've that I've heard and you know Dr. DePaul you you can absolutely testament to that as well you know all the patients that that you've seen and you know you've seen the pr progress um from when they first came in to you know when when you finally finished their treatment plan so uh, absolutely I completely agree with that so um one question for you this this is kind of an interesting one um you you did go to residency. What was was there ever able? Was there ever a time where you wanted? Were, were you th were thinking about going into specialty, or were you completely sold on general dentistry? Yeah, that. that I mean, it's a good one because I I wouldn't wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I mean, I it went through my mind as far as specializing. Um, but even even now, being being out for you know several years, I, I still. I still enjoy enough different things where I don't think I'd want to focus on just, on just one thing. So, um, yeah, probably for me being a general dentist just makes the most sense, <laughs> but every, everybody's different. I mean, if there's a specific aspect that you, you love about dentistry, then go after the specialty for sure. You know, just, it's just up to you. Great. This is, this is actually a funny one. Um, you had mentioned your, your father's a dentist, as well, did he ever try to recruit you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I, I went with dental school to dental school with the idea that I'd be taking over his office one day, and um, you know, for various reasons that that didn't happen. But um, you know, he, he was a good guy. He's uh, he was a really good dentist. He's retired now, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we we both thought that was going to happen, and it, it just didn't. But I, you know. At the end of the day, I think it worked out for the best anyway, so. <laughs> great, great. Um, yeah, so, so we're coming up on five minutes left. Um, just want to point out some of, the, some of the questions that stuck out to me was um, that that'll be great to conclude with was, um, do you have any, any suggestions for any um, dental students as of now in 2020? 
you know, going through the whole COVID and, you know, taking online courses and um, it's a little bit different from when you, when you were currently in dental school, you were able to be as hands-on as possible and, you know, doing your, uh, most of the things in person. Um, what would be your biggest suggestion for a dental, a dental student, student now um, having to make that virtual transition? Yeah, I mean, as far as um, preparing yourself to get out there after dental school, I mean, you, you get online and use all the resources that are there. I mean, even though I don't agree with a lot of the stuff on Dental Town, read Dental Town. Um, a lot of people like Dental Nachos on Facebook. I mean, you take in as much information as you can. They, they, you know, Dental Town was a huge resource for me. And, and again, I mean, there's a lot of opinions on there that I really don't agree with. I mean, but you got to sift through all that and you, you can learn quite a bit about dentistry. I mean, you just, you just got to get out there and read and, you know, hear as much as you can from these dentists that have been doing it for a while. And, you know, I mean, it's, it is, yeah, it's a tough time to be trying to learn dentistry right now, but um, yeah, read as much as you can get on there, watch as many videos as you can. I mean, you can pick up a lot of stuff. Great. Great. Um, question for you, doc. So you're, you would consider yourself an experienced doc. Um, would there ever, would there ever be any procedure now that you would want to learn that you would look into and, you know, that, that kind of sparks your interest, um, you know, at this point in your career? Yeah, I mean, as far as implant dentistry, I still haven't gotten into um, doing sinus lifts or uh, more complex grafting. Um, so I, I, that's still a path that I'm going down and, you know, I plan to learn more, take more live patient courses when that's, you know, an option again. So, um, yeah, there, there's a lot to learn. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm 42 years old now. I, I, I plan on doing this for another 25 or 30 years. So I, I don't plan on just settling with what I know right now. There's so much to learn out there. But I mean, probably the next thing will be learning more about implants. Great, great. Yeah, that, that's, that's something that I, I hear from all the students and, you know, the, the experience docs as well is like, you know, like implants has, have always sparked my interest. Um, but, you know, I was n never able to tackle them the, the way I wanted to. And that would be the one procedure um, that I would want to look into more and, you know, start doing and learn about as well. Um, so another question was, I, 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 you had mentioned that you are um, a, a partner with Dr. Gupta. Mm -hmm. The business aspect of things, what, was there anything that, that stuck out to you that you learned that you didn't know coming out of dental school or, you know, I know that you, you said, you know, your father had his own practice, something that he maybe not have taught you. Um, what, what was something that stuck out to you from the business aspect? Because I can imagine um, a, a lot of students and a lot of docs, their ultimate goal is to own their own practice or be a partner or something along that, those lines. So um, how would you answer that, doc? Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't really know anything about the dental business when I came out of dental school. So I... I mean, before you, you go in, I mean, if you are going to go into a private practice, say, I mean, you, you, you've got to get some background information on that. Um, and it, it's hard. There's not a lot of good resources for that. And that's, that's where, you know, if you're, if you're open to the idea of a DSO and an Aspen, it, it's going to take a lot of those pressures off of you. Um, cause, cause there's a lot of them and it's getting harder and harder. Um, DSOs are growing and growing. I mean, there's still a lot of private practices out there, but I mean, you're going to try to compete with, you know, these larger businesses that have MBAs and, you know, these complex, you know, advertising departments. They, they, they understand this stuff a lot better than, than we do. We've been studying dentistry for a while. So, I mean, if you do decide to go the private practice route, I mean, I, again, I, I know some guys I graduated with that have done pretty well, but they, they spent their time, you know, learning the business. Some of them worked for DSOs initially. So, I mean, it's hard to speak to specifics um, because there's so much to it. It's, 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 not that, it's not that easy. It can be done, but you've you got to go out there and make sure you educate yourself. If you just... I know a lot of people have just bought offices and, you know, struggled because they didn't, they didn't get the background with it. So um, you just, you got to educate yourself or, or, you know, lean on the DSO to take some of that pressure off. Of you. Great, great. Thank you, doctor. So I think this would be a great time to conclude the webinar. Um, I just want to thank everyone for attending.
Um, thank you, Dr. DePaul, for taking the time out of your day. Um, I know that your schedule is super, super busy um, being an MCD and, you know, working, working a, a hectic schedule, you know, day in, day out. So I, I just want to thank you again um, for taking the time out. Want to thank everybody that attended. What I'm going to do is I'm going to provide everyone with my email. So if you had some follow-up questions from either me or Dr. DePaul, um, I would be glad to answer those um, after the webinar. And um, thank you everyone from coming, for coming out and have a great night. Thank you, Dr. DePaul, again. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. See you, everyone. All right. See you guys. Have a great night.